Hello everyone, welcome to another Celebration Sunday. This Sunday we are featuring the Day at the Farm DSP. This one is super cute. If you um, haven't seen it in the catalog, I'm going to show it to you in just a second. I have it all off to the side. It's a great, great DSP. It coordinates with one of the bundles in our mini catalog. So we're going to go over that in just a minute. Let me show you what we are going to make today though, because you're going to want to stick around. This card, this is called an Impossible card. Isn't that cute? And I've added a little pocket, so there's a little pocket so you can stick in a little note or whatever you want to stick in there. So this is what we're making today. It is stinking cute. You're going to want to stick around and watch that one. Um, before we get to the project, sorry, I'm just going to grab one thing real quick. Before we get to the project, um, just go over all of our little housekeeping items, everything that's going on. March is Paper Pumpkin's 10-year anniversary. Now, if you would have told me that it was their 10th year, I there would have been no way I would have believed you. I cannot believe Paper Pumpkin has been around for 10 years, but it has, and March is their anniversary. So, in honor of that, you are getting a free stamp set. I mean, there's always a stamp set in Paper Pumpkin, but you're getting an additional free stamp set. And so, it is going to be so cute. They actually show the free one you're going to get here. It's going to be so cute. It says, one free additional stamp set, which includes a plant, a pot builder, a plant and pot builder to make a plant-tastic projects. So very, very cute. Um, so this is going to be a really cute box. And look at how gorgeous that box is, guys. Oh, don't miss March. So February's Paper Pumpkins should start billing and shipping this week. So we should get those very, very soon. As soon as we get those, hopefully I'll be able to go live with mine. Um, but March is Paper Pumpkin. The subscription period is now open for March. So if you want March, head to that Paper Pumpkin um, website that's the link is in the video description sign up March's kit you're going to get nine cards three each of three designs you're going to get the paper pumpkin stamp set that coordinates this you're going to get a polished pink stampin spot and you're going to get that additional free stamp set so you're going to get two stamp sets in this pa March paper pumpkin kit um, just because it's stampin up's 10th anniversary for paper pumpkin so it's a great 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 deal um celebration we are we're down to the final weeks of celebration guys uh february is quickly coming to an end so if you have not yet gotten all your celebration items or you have not yet taken advantage of this amazing join special make sure that you are doing that before february 28th because time's running out guys if you have a long wish list or maybe you have some super expensive things on your wish list like a stamparatus or the markers the big cut and emboss machine it is a great way to get those bigger higher priced items by putting them in your starter kit it is easy to join there are three options during celebration options one and two each include a mini cut and emboss machine you can either choose the boho blue one or you can choose the white one options one and two are 129 dollars. you get to choose 175 in product and that can be anything and um if you don't want those mini machines, option three is for you. That one is $99 and you get $175 in product as well. So amazing, amazing deals. Plus you get to see new products early. We have the brand new annual catalog coming out very soon. That one will be launching in May. So Demonstrator is going to get to see that very, very soon. So I cannot wait for that. If you are shopping during celebration, there are more celebration options to choose from then in addition to the brochure so if you have not if you've maybe gotten everything you want from here there are even more things to choose from so you can still shop and earn this is the one we are featuring today the day at the farm dsp this is a 12 by 12 stack of dsp and we'll go over that in a little bit more detail in just a minute uh, but i wanted to bring out my mini catalogs i wanted to show you the bundle that it coordinates with now i don't have this bundle so we're not using it today but the bundle especially those dies they coordinate with the dsp and i'm going to show you that in just a minute we're going to be fussy cutting our dsp the images are not complicated to fussy cut so we're just going to fussy cut them but if you have this bundle or if you love the dsp and you you love this bundle get the bundle and then you can get the dsp the bundle is 51.25 so you're already at a celebration level so you can get that dsp for free so don't miss this one in the mini catalog this is the on the farm bundle um Stamps and dies. It's a great little bundle. And we're going to talk about our on our day at the farm DSP in just a minute. Um, tomorrow is my very last day to sign up for my February card crate. This is my class to go every month. I feature a bundle or a stamp set. And this is my share a milkshake class to go um, card crate. Now card crate is $35. You get $20 in product and it all ships to you. 
you do the class on your own time included are PDF instructions as well as video instructions. The last day to sign up for that with payment is tomorrow though. Um, so email me today if you want that card crate. Now, if you are shopping my online store, please use this host code. This is February's host code. All orders receive a PDF with three exclusive projects. If your order is over $50, you're going to receive the make and take kit that coordinates with that. All right, this is the DSP we're using today. Now, this sheet is the one that those dies are going to cut out. You're going to cut the cow, the little sheep, the pigs. It's all going to cut out of this sheet. So pretty. Now, look at the back of this one. So cute. Look at that red plaid cherry cobbler plaid oh so fun this would be if you don't like the the animal side or the busy side the other side you are sure to love there are lots of really fun um neutral prints all right this is another one look at how cute all those little cows and trees are so so very sweet and then the back is like a beautiful little hillside i just love that that's so fun this would be this Paper is so good for scrapbooking, for sure. This is a great scrapbooker's one. This one is so fun, too. I just, on the cherry cobbler print. Now, I'm not a big cherry cobbler fan, but I really love the way they used it on here. This side is like, um, I would say, like, maybe tire tracks, or it's just real distressed with crumb cake. Really, really cute. This one, I think, is my favorite DSP of the whole package. I just love the little ducks, the chickens, the little chicks. It's so adorable. Um, the other side is, like, chicken wire. That's a really versatile one, too. This one, I think you could use this for a beautiful scrapbook page. This would be so much fun. You could even, like, maybe even frame this, put this in a nursery or something. Very, very cute. And then the other side of that, you have this beautiful balmy blue floral. Um, all right, the last pattern are these really fun vegetables. I think this one is so fun. I can think of so many fun things to do with this one. And then the back of that is this crushed curry stripe, which is just fantastic. So if you don't like the animal side, the other sides, the back sides are are super fun. They're, they're neutral. They're um, basic. You can really use these for a lot of things. So that is the DSP that we are featuring today. And we are going to make this impossible card. Now the, this I was kind of blown away when I first saw this. Now, I saw this. Um, Karen Titus showed this on her Facebook Live a couple of weeks ago. And I was a little bit blown away because I could not wrap my head around how this card was possibly done. It is. It's hard to show in a video. But it's just, it stands up in the middle. It's all one piece of cardstock, if you believe that. It's <laughs> one piece of cardstock. Now, I did add a pocket on the back of mine. And I'm going to show you how to do that. There's a little pocket so you can write a little note or whatever you want to do so i added the little pocket so that you have somewhere to write a message but i'm going to show you how to do this so let's start with our with the actual card base and so for that you're going to need a piece that is five and a half by four and a quarter and grab your paper trimmer normally we do everything we do scoring and stuff on the simply scored but today we're going to use the paper trimmer because we're going to do some cutting as well all right on the I got to pull out my notes for this because there I do not have this memorized so let me pull my notes on the short side we are going to score in half at two and one eighth so line it up at two and one eighth and make sure you're using your scoring blade the scoring blade is the light gray blade there's also a dark gray blade this is for cutting we're going to use this one in a minute but score with your light gray one Okay, so we have that scored in half. Now on one of the five and a half inch sides, we are going to cut this at two and three quarters. So line it up at that two and three quarter line. I know my light is glaring right there, so I hope that this still makes sense. And we are going to cut and stop at that score line. Now on the cutting blade, I'm going to pull this out and show you just real quick. On the cutting blade, there are these little lines on the side. I hope that hope that shows up the lines on the side um, tell you exactly where the blade is so you know exactly where to stop so we cut down to that score line all right now I'm gonna turn it around I'm gonna flip it over and we're going to cut at one inch on each side and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna stop Oops, hold on I need to get my blade back in Play it back in um, we're gonna stop at that score line so cut just down to that score line we're gonna do one inch on each side so I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna measure on this side one inch on this side one inch and cut down to that score line all right so this is what you should have so this little kind of there's two on this side there's one cut on this side and you're probably like okay she just completely ruined her cardstock how on earth is that gonna happen so let me move my paper trim out of the way we're gonna bring this back in just a minute but I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna show you how this card works so you're gonna hold this like like this you have the score line here you're just gonna flip this one backwards on that score line and this center panel will pop up and this 
that is your impossible card. Isn't that amazing? So on each side, you're going to have a longer edge and a shorter edge. And then on the side, you're going to have a longer edge and a shorter edge. Now, whichever side is your front, it doesn't matter. There, it's the same both ways. So I'm going to show you how to do that again so that we did all of our trimming this way. And all of the measurements are in the video description and they're on my blog in a, a little bit. So you can come back to, and do all, get all the measurements there. But we did all the trimming and then you're just going to flip the one side backwards. And it doesn't matter which side you flip backwards. Either side will work. Isn't that amazing? And then just kind of burnish on that score line just so that kind of pops up. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh. So much fun. Now there's... It's a little bit um, different in cutting, but the actual card is, it's just amazing. It's amazing. So let's cut some DSP. This is from that Day at the Farm DSP. We're going to cut these, and I'm actually going to cut them together because we can cut them both at the same time. So I'm going to bring my paper trimmer back in. Um, these pieces of DSP, let me check my notes. I want to get these correct. The DSP is two and a half by four, and you'll need two pieces of that. All right, now we are going to cut at three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to bring it over here. And I am going to cut down to two and one eighth. Now there's a ruler on the side of your trimmer here. There's a ruler so you can measure two and one eighth. Put that back on three fourths. Two and one eighth with that line. So cut down to two and one eighth. Sorry, I have to get my head down here to see it. So two and one eighth. So we're just cutting that. Okay. And now we are going to put this in at two and one eighth on the long side. And we're just going to, which side am I cutting off? I'm cutting off the other side. We're cutting off the, this side, the big side. So you're just going to cut to that three quarter inch line and you'll feel it release and you just pull that piece out. And then you have two pieces that look like that. Okay. Now those measurements are in the video description. So again, I promise, don't worry about writing those down or anything. And did I, okay. So now you're like, oh, she totally messed that up. It's not going to fit. And you are correct, but we'll just flip it over this way. Watch. Boop. Wait, this way. <laughs> this way. There we go. You just turn it over, flip it over, and your DSP will fit perfectly. Just like that. Okay? This one, I don't think I went all the way down to two and an eight, so I'm going to put that back in my trimmer because I think it needs to go down a little bit more. I can't get my head right over my trimmer, so it is... Let me see. Did I put it in... Correctly. I did put it in correctly. How come it's not lining up? Is my cardstock too big? I'm gonna I'm just gonna trim it just a little bit more. Just so that it fits. Just I'm gonna take off like an eighth of an inch there. Just right down to that, that score line. Perfect. Alright. There we go. That's perfect. Look at that. Perfect. And both sides will fit. Ta-da! All right, now before we put our trimmer away, we are going to score that little pocket piece. And so, uh-oh, <laughs> I just dropped a piece down. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut another piece of cardstock. Um, your pocket piece, the piece that's going to make your pocket back here, this piece is, hold on, i got to get this, four and a half by two. I have to keep checking my notes because, you know, this is, it's a brand new card to me. So I've never, I've only made a couple of these, so. But it was completely brand new. And we're just going to score it half an inch on each side. So half an inch on each side. And this is going to make our little pocket. Half an inch on each side. Okay, now I need to grab another piece of, while well, I have my trimmer out, I need to grab another piece of garden green because I dropped a piece. And it went down between my, um, my filing cabinet and my desk. So I'm never going to see that again. So I need to grab a piece. Let me, I'm trying to find a scrap that's big enough. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. This needs to be uh, five and a half by one. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with this one in a second, but um, that is the problem, right? You have a little gap between my filing cabinet and my desk, and I don't drop stuff down there frequently, but when I do, it's generally gone forever. All right, move those out of the way. Okay, let's bring back our pieces here. So we have our card base. We have our DSP that we trimmed up. It's going to fit perfectly on there. There we go. We have our little panel. This is going to be what we stamp on. This is our pocket. We're going to fold on those lines. And we'll adhere this in a minute. This will go right back here, just like that. So I hope you guys are with me. I hope I haven't confused everybody completely. Now this piece is going to act as a brace. Because if you pick this up, this is super flimsy. So we're going to add this as a brace. But let's get our DSP glued on first. 
let's adhere these down. So this is going to go on one side, just like this, and this is going to go on the other side. I do encourage you, I mean, you can try this with some scratch paper if you're a little bit hesitant to do this first with, um, you know, your good cardstock. I'm, I'm with you. I have good cardstock. Um, try this on some scratch paper first just so you can kind of get that mechanism down. Because when I first saw this, I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. So I actually had to make one to, to really get that concept down. So I encourage you to try it. I have another piece of that Day at the Farm DSP. This one is cut to um, five and a half by... Um, three quarters of an inch and that's going to get glued down onto our little what I'm calling like the um, brace on that so that is going to go right down there now I'm going to add adhesive to this but I'm going to kind of lay this down with the bottom side up where I'm going to put adhesive because I don't want adhes adhesive in the middle so I'm going to put adhesive only where it's going to get stuck onto that that piece here and so you just want to Line this up nice and straight. Just make sure the other side gets lined up nice and straight like that. And that stabilizes your card so it doesn't kind of flip back and forth. So isn't that cute? Love it. All right, let's work on our little pocket. So we have our, our little piece of paper here that we scored on those half inch score lines. And I'm just gonna use some um, stamp and seal plus. You can use any kind of strong adhesive. Tear and tape would be good whatever you want to use. I'm going to put some just on either side of those half inch tabs. I'm going to fold those in and we're just going to adhere this to the back of our pocket here. So I'm just going to line that score line up with the edge of the paper there. And this should just make a nice little pocket like that. Now it is open on the bottom so if you put something small in there it might fall through. But we're putting a piece of paper in there that's going to um, it's not good. It's going to be too big to fall through. So I'm not too worried about that bottom being open, but that adds our little pocket and then you have somewhere to sign. So this is our little pocket piece that's going to go in. And this pocket piece is uh, two and an eighth by three and a quarter. And again, those measurements are in the video description. So I just have a white piece. Now I did want to show you that you can fit a gift card in here. A gift card will fit. It is a little snug, but you can fit a gift card in here. So that's a great way to give a gift card too. Now, if you put a gift card in here, um, I would say that's going to be a little bit of extra postage. So if you're mailing it, just be aware the gift card is probably not going to be post office friendly. So we're going to come back to this. Now let's do our, our little background piece here. We're going to work on this piece. So I have another piece of white that is three and a fourth by one and seven eighths. And we're going to do some ink blending on this one. So you have that piece. I have a scrap piece of, just a scrap piece of paper here to protect my surface. And I'm going to start with Pool Party. And I have a blending brush. This is a great job for the little mini blending brushes in our um, mini catalog. But, so I'm just going to ink that up. I'm going to start on my scratch piece of paper. And I'm just going to go about halfway down lightly. You can always add color, but you can't take it away. So start lightly. And I'm just going to kind of ink blend down just to get a nice little sky. A little bit like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave that out in case I want to come back. I'm gonna grab my garden green and another blending brush. We're gonna do the same thing. And I'm just gonna go about halfway up. I'm not trying to mix those colors. I'm, there's gonna be a little bit of a white line in between them, just like a little horizon line between them. But um, I want the grass to be a little bit darker, so I'll go over that a little bit more. And I think that's good. So that is our little background. That's our little sky. And I'm going to close up my inks. We'll come back to our inks in just a minute. Let's work on our little animals. All right, now I did mention that if you had that day at the farm uh, bundle, it will cut those, those little animals out of the DSP. But I don't have that bundle, so I'm gonna fussy cut them. Now I've already fussy cut my little pigs and my little lamb. And I'm going to do the little cow. Now the dies, I'm, I'm telling you, the dies will cut these out, but I, I'm a fan of fussy cutting. So, you know, that it doesn't scare me. But if the, if you really don't like the fussy cut and you love this DSP, please invest in those dies. They will, they will really add to your, the value of the DSP. Um, but it doesn't take too long. I think that for me anyway, it would take me just as long to get out my die cutting machine to 
get all the plates together to line up the image and then to run it through. So it, it takes me just about the same amount of time. So if you don't mind fussy cutting, then I would say go ahead and grab your scissors and you can fussy cut those little animals. But I know there are people that that hate it, so you do you. All right, is everybody watching the Super Bowl today? Do we have any, any football fans? Anybody going for a specific team? I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't even know who my family's rooting for. Okay, so we have our little our little cow fussy cut. I do want to clean up his tail a little bit over here. Just a little bit. Okay, so we have our little cow. We have our little pigs. We have our little sheep. All right, so see, that didn't take too long. Let me clean up my mess here so that doesn't end up on my floor too. All right, and I'm going to use dimensionals to stick all of these on. I'm going to stick my cow on with dimensionals. Now his little tail is going to hang off the edge of the cart a little bit, off the edge piece. So don't add dimensionals too close to the edge. We're going to stick him on like that. I'm going to stick my, my mama pig on flat. She's going to just kind of stick up here. <clears throat> and then my baby pig, I'll just cut a little piece of a dimensional here. You can use a baby dimensional, a little mini one. We're just going to stick our little baby pig on here. Now this little sheep we're going to save, he's going to go on our little inside panel piece. And we'll add that in just a minute. So move all this stuff. Oh, my little thing is oh, wonky. Okay, so this is our little outside piece. I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this. And then we're going to stick it onto our... Our cherry cobbler piece so let me stick some dimensionals on the back throw those on the floor <laughs> on my desk anyway um, my cherry cobbler piece is three and a half by two and an eighth and again I know there's a lot of measurements on this card but um, they are all gonna be listed in that video description so don't worry about writing anything down okay so that is on there now adhesive on the back of this piece and this is gonna fit perfectly on the front of our card so it's gonna go right on that little pocket it's gonna fit perfectly just kind of line that up on the bottom on the side there there we go so that's all you're gonna see from the front isn't that cute so cute i just love it okay let's work on our little our little inside pocket piece here and then we will do the rest do our stamping so i'm gonna use some liquid glue on this because this is gonna go in and out of the pocket and i just want to make sure that it is adhered fully down so that like his little legs don't catch on anything or his ears or whatever. So I'm going to put this down here. Now, if you need more room to write, I would leave the little sheep off. You don't have to have that on there. I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Hang on. You can leave that little sheep off if you, if you need more room to write. <coughs> All right, let's move on to our ribbon. You guys, I'm using three different ribbons on this card. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, this is our soft suede, um, what do they call this, faux suede trim. I'm just going to cut a little piece, just a couple inches on that, and fold it in half. And I'm actually going to just use a stapler to staple this onto our little, our little piece here. So just a little mini stapler. Staple that on. And I'm going to use this three twine combo pack. This is in our mini catalog. This is the garden green one, so it's going to coordinate perfectly. And I'm going to tie a little bow around this. I'm going to put my, put my scissors on top of this to kind of hold it down. I'm going to just tie a bow. It's not going to be pretty, guys. This is... Oh, hold your breath. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking when I made this card with three bows. I can barely tie one ribbon on camera. And I'm going to have to tie two on camera for this card. But it's worth it in the end, guys. I promise. All right. Just cut those little tabs, ends. Okay, so there is your little pocket piece. So this will slide right in, just like that. So you have a little place to write. Remember, a gift card will fit, but it'll be tight. But you have a little place to write. Okay, let's do our, our greeting here. So I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit. Move that, we'll come back to that. Garden green ink. I have just a scrap piece of white. And the stamp set that I'm using today, this is the Happy Labels. Um, stamp set. This is in our mini catalog. This actually gets bundled with the Happy Label Pick-A-Punch, so you can pick different ends. It's like a little um, 
ticket or a postage stamp and you can choose from so it's really really cute and these greetings are really fun and they're nice and big so we're using this thank you so I'm just going to use garden green and we're just going to stamp that on our scrap piece of white and we're going to cut a little tag we're going to use our tailor-made tag dies I use these all the time so if you haven't seen me use these I don't know where you've been but I use these all the time one of my favorite favorite dies so I have the second smallest of that clipped corner one I'm going to pull out my Boho Blue Mini Cut in a Box Machine. This is the one you can choose for free when you join my team. It's always, always a great time to join. All right, grab your plates. And we're going to do some partial die cutting on here because you'll see my tag is a lot smaller than this die cut tag. I wanted a much smaller tag, so I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of partial die cutting on this. So I'm going to lay this down. Let me grab some poster tape. I want to hold this in place. So I'm just going to line this up, make sure everything is nice and straight, and we're going to cut this front part. Now I'm only going to put my plate on to like where the greeting kind of ends right there. So I hope you can kind of see that. My plate ends right here. I don't want this back part to cut. I'm just going to cut this just to where that plate ends is the only place it's going to cut. Pull off my post-it tape. There we go. And you'll see that it only cut that part. Now we're going to put it back on. And we're just going to kind of line it up. And this die actually I really like because the little pierced edges just kind of like lock into place. So once you get it kind of lined up, it kind of locks into place, which is really, which is really nice. And we're going to put this back on. But we only need to cut that, that back part. So I'm only going to line up my plate put about right there. Now it only needs to cut that very back side of that tag. Oops, there we go. And so now you have your own little teeny tiny custom tag. Isn't that cute? So that's the die we started with. So you can see how much smaller that is. It's so cute. And it doesn't take too many extra steps. One little extra step and it's good. All right, put this away. All right, I'm just going to put that down there for now. I'm going to move that. Where's our little greeting okay we're gonna tie another bow I just have some linen thread here I'm gonna put this on I'm just gonna thread it through we're not actually gonna tie it once we get it onto the card because that'll add a lot more stability it'll help me out <clears throat> all right a um, couple dimensionals on the back of our tag here this just goes right down here and we're gonna tie this bow okay we'll see this is just a scrap of linen thread. I don't have it on the spool. This was left over from a class or something. So I keep it in a little, my ribbon, my extra ribbon scraps. All right, that wasn't too bad. We managed with three ribbons, three different ribbons on this card we managed. It works out. All right, trim those ends a little bit. Voila. All right, one more step. Little finishing touch. I have these solid faceted gems. These are in the annual catalog. You can check those up. Now the green down here is Mossy Meadow, but I think it goes really well with this. So we're just going to add a few little, little gems on here. A couple up here, one down here, just like that. And that, my friends, is the Impossible card. Isn't it cute? So you have a little pocket back here. Now I added the pocket myself. That wasn't in the original instructions that Karen Titus first showed, but I added the little pocket, so it's really cute. Um... And it is, it's, it's just so like mind bending. How does this work? But it's very, very cute. And I have a couple other examples that I wanted to share with you when I was making this impossible card to begin with. So there's our day at the farm. This one has the hues of happiness DSP. Now there's no pocket on these ones. So, but it just folds flat. You can mail these. This one wouldn't necessarily fit in the envelope because I went past that, that top edge. If you stay within the little realms of the rectangle here, then you can stick it in a, a regular envelope to mail it. But it is so cute, and they stand up on your desk or your mantle, wherever you want to display them. So cute. And then I have one more featuring the Playing in the Rain Suite. So, so cute. That little turtle is so cute. And I did the same thing with this tag that we did with the tag on here. I just shortened it up a little bit. just thought that was a little cuter. And then with the white seam binding, I just used my Stampin' Blends to color that ribbon. Okay, guys, so that is three different examples of this Impossible card. I hope you give it a try. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, check back on those instructions. If you need to rewatch the video, you can do that. All the measurements are in the video description. You can check those out. And um, they'll be also be on my blog in 
about half an hour when I get the blog post up. All right, guys, if you are shopping, please head to my online store. Use this host code. This is February's host code, and you earn some extra benefits when you shop using the host code. If you are watching this on Facebook, I'd love it if you shared it with your crafty friends. If you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. That really helps out my business. It's free, and you never miss a video. All right, guys, I'll be back on Wednesday on in my business page for another fun project. I'm not sure what we're doing just yet, but it's going to be cute, I promise. All right, guys, have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you guys later. Bye.